Since the beginning of time, we have been told scary stories of wicked witches, boogeymen, and other fantastical monsters, usually to try to frighten us into good behavior, or as a means of entertaining ourselves during camping trips or Halloween nights. Few of us continue to believe in these childhood monsters as we grow older, and we are programmed to obey the norms of our society. To some, this means abandoning the notion of supernatural in favor of logic and reason, the so-called scientific way of thinking. For others, they abandon the tales of wicked witches and monsters for more complex belief systems. The childhood fears replaced by more adult fears, such as the soul, one's duty to a divine force, or similar, the so-called religious way of thinking. Yet, for a majority of us, neither logic and reason, nor scripture, is enough to get rid of our childhood obsession with the dark and mysterious. We still dream of the monsters and witches of old, even if our adult minds constantly remind us that such beliefs are superstitious at best, and mad at worst. I would describe myself as one of the majority, forever lost in daydreams, but knowing I had to exist in a world very separate from the ghosts and goblins I was told when I was young. One of my friends, however, was very much more superstitious than I was, and believed the world was haunted. In order to spare my friend ridicule from an often harsh audience, I will refer to him as Stephen, and share with you the story he often told me about Mama Bones, a figure he claimed existed. I jokingly call him mad every time, perhaps because the story always brings back those childhood fears I try so hard to block out during my everyday life. Anyway, the story, as Stephen used to tell it, always began on a Saturday night around 11 o'clock on a November evening. Stephen said he would walk down a path not far from his home that led to an old churchyard that had been falling into disrepair many years back. As instructed by his grandfather, who had passed not long before Stephen first told this tale to me. Upon reaching the end of the path, Stephen would slip through a fair-sized gap in the wall surrounding the churchyard and go to a small grave next to a weeping willow tree. As the clock struck eleven, Stephen claimed a figure would appear next to the grave, resembling an old woman, sitting cross-legged and covered in dirty rags that concealed her face. The figure would sit quietly until approached, and Stephen said upon approaching her, he would call her Mama Bones, as his grandfather instructed, and would ask how she fared. If she responded that she was well, it was an invitation to speak with her. However, if she did not answer, Stephen would leave the churchyard without speaking another word. Stephen said that Mama Bones could answer any question. But one had to be mindful not to stay longer than an hour, for when the clock struck midnight, the figure would take off her robes. Stephen had never dared to stay to experience this, but he claimed his grandfather had told him a frightening tale of what happened. As a young boy, Stephen's grandfather claimed to have hidden as his friend spoke to Mama Bones, forgetting about the time. As the clock struck midnight, Mama Bones removed her rags and Stephen's grandfather covered his eyes, as his friend apparently dropped dead from fright. I always chuckled a little at this, though Stephen would give me a look that silenced me. Although the story sounded silly to me, I could tell that Stephen did not find any humor in it. To him, this was real, and I'm sure his grandfather would have been the same. So, what more can be said about Stephen and his story of Mama Bones? Not much, I suppose. A rather basic ghost story told by a friend. That's what I always convinced myself.